Hi everyone and welcome to the Dibbly Dobbly podcast. Before we get started, make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page as well. On today's episode of the podcast, we review the first test match between India and England and preview the second test match in Chennai. Let's recap the scores from the first test match between India and England from Chennai. England batted first, making 578 in their first innings. Root top scored with 218. Bumrah and Ashwin took three wickets each. India in reply made 337. Pant top scored with 91. Bess took four for 76. England in their second innings, all out for 178. Joe Root top scoring once again with 40. Ashwin taking 6 for 61. India was set 420 to win. They couldn't chase those runs down. Finishing 192 all out. Coley top scoring with 72. And Leach taking 4 for 76 for England. England won by 227 runs. And go 1-0 up in the series. And Joe Root was named man of the match. Here are the key points and stats from this first test match between India and England. This is India's first loss in a test match at home since 2017. That was against Australia and Pune. They lost that test by 333 runs. England have now won six games away from home in test matches. This is their best winning streak in test matches away from home since 1914. Joe Root became the first player to score 200 in their 100th test match. And it's also the highest score from any players to score 100 or more in their 100th test. Virat Kohli, this is his fourth consecutive loss as captain in test matches. He lost the test match against Australia in Adelaide, where India lost by 36 runs by 8 wickets. The second test against New Zealand by 7 wickets. The first test against New Zealand by 10 wickets and this test match against against England in Chennai by 227 runs. James Anderson has the most wickets in test cricket after turning the age of 30 with 343 wickets, beating Colty Walsh's record of 341. Ishan Sharma became the third Indian fast bowler to take 300 test wickets for India. He does that with Kapil Dev and Sahir Khan, the other two Indian bowlers to achieve that feat. Um, Joe Root has equaled Michael Vaughan's record for the most wins as England captain with 26 with this victory in Chennai. So those are all the key points and stats from this test match between India and and England. Let's have a look at the team's performances during this first test match. Let's start with India and their batsmen. Rohit Sharma 6 and 12, Gill 29 and 50, Pajara 73 and 15, Kohli 11 and 72, Rahani 1 and 0, Pant 91 and 11, and Sunder 85 not out and 0. That's how the Indian batsmen performed in this test match. Let's have a look at the bowlers and see how they performed in this test match. Sunder took no wickets for the match. Ashwin took nine wickets. Nadim took four wickets for the match. Ishan Sharma took three wickets. And Bumrah took four wickets for the match. That's how the Indian bowlers performed in this test match. Let's have a look at England's performance in this test match. And we'll start with their batsmen. Burns, 33-0. and zero. Sibley, 87 and 16, Lawrence 0 and 18, Root 218, 40, Stokes 82 and 7, Pope 34 and 28, Butler 30 and 24. That's how the England batsmen performed in this test match. Let's have a look at their bowlers. Stokes took one wicket for the match, Bess took five wickets for the match, Archer took three wickets for the match, Leach took six wickets for the match. And Anderson took five wickets for the match. That's how the England bowlers performed in this test match. Let's have a look at both teams' 11s heading into the 
second test match. Let's have a look at India's potential 11. I don't think India need to make too many changes to their team, even though they've lost by 227 runs in this first test match. I don't think they need to make too many changes. I think the only spot that's in question is Shabazz Nadim. He took four wickets in this match, but he was expensive. I think either Kuldeep Yadav or Axel Patel may replace him in the side for the second test. Depends if Axel Patel is fit or not from that knee injury. It's easy to overreact when you lose badly like India did, but you want to change as little as you can. And I think they will do that for this second test match. So the likely 11 could be Rohit Sharma, Gill, Pajara, Kohli, Rahani, Pant, Sunder, Ashwin, Kuldeep Yadav or Axel Patel, Nishant Sharma, and Jashpert Bumrah. Let's have a look at England's potential 11 for the second test. Now, what we do know is that Jofra Archer has been ruled out of the second test due to an elbow injury that he picked up during the first test, and Josh Butler is going home. So England will have to make two changes to their 11 from the first test. Stuart Broad is the obvious replacement for Jofra Archer, and Ben Folkes being the backup wicketkeeper to replace Butler. Now, there was some talk about Anderson being rested for the second test, but now with the injury to Archer, Anderson has to play. We know England are adopting this rotation policy to keep their players fresh, and we understand that given the times we are in. But I think you need to play your best 11, which Anderson is a part of, and his partnership with Stuart Broad, which is England's greatest ever partnership in test matches, are definitely in your best 11, and will help England in winning this second test match and going 2-0 up in the series. Then you can consider resting Anderson after this test. But England should be thinking about picking their best 11. So the likely 11 could be Burns, Sibley, Lawrence, Root, Stokes, Pope, Folks, Bess, Broad, Leach and Anderson. I think both teams may go into the second test match with those 11s, but we shall see. What are the key points India need to do in order to bounce back and level the series at one all? In this test match, their body language was poor. We didn't see the fight, mental toughness and character and resilience as we saw in the Australia series. They didn't show up to play it and look flat comp um, compared to England, I should say, who were ready to play and prepared to fight it out in this test match. They had a real opportunity to draw this test match, India, but they didn't show that fight, character, resilience and mental toughness as we saw when they batted out for the draw in Sydney. But batting last in these conditions are going to be tough when the ball is turning, spinning, reverse swing, and uneven bounce. It's always going to be difficult. Batsmen got starts but didn't convert them into big scores like Joe Root did. Uh, the bowling was poor at times and too many no balls bowled from India. 27 in this test match, 20 in the first innings and 7 in the second innings compared to England's two no balls for the whole test match. So that needs to be improved heading into the second test match. And saying all that, we know India will bounce back, as we saw in Australia. This team bounces back from setbacks well, and no different here being 1-0 down in the series against England. But India know that England has the momentum heading into the second test match. But India will know that they can bounce back from anything, as we saw in Australia, and will be hopeful of winning this second test match to level the series at one all. What do England need to do to win this second test match and go 2-0 up in the series? Well, keep doing what they've been doing. It's a great opportunity for England to get a 2-0 series lead. Not many teams that have gone to India get a 2-0 series lead. They need to grab this opportunity, England, because they know India will come back in this series. If they go 2-0 up, they wipe out any hope of India winning the series, and the only result India could get is a drawn series. But England just need to focus on this test match and not look too far ahead. I thought in this test match they batted well. Joe Root leading from the front with his 218 in the first innings. Good contributions from Sibley and Stokes in the first innings and from Pope and Butler as well and good runs from the tail enders as well. Um, heading into this second test match, I think they need more runs from Burns and Lawrence. Um, they didn't quite get the runs they would have liked from them in this um, first test match. So hopefully they'll get some more runs out of them for the second test match. I thought the bowling was good. Um, they bowled pretty well, England. I was very impressed with Leach and Bess. Yes, they were expensive, and they've got the inexperience, but I thought they bowled really well at times. Um, taking 11 wickets between them, 
out of the 20 wickets for the match for England is a good result for England, not only in this first test match, but heading into the second test match and then for the rest of the series, it's good to know that the spinners from England are getting the wickets, getting the job done, and really putting England into good positions in this series. Um, then Anderson, Archer, Stokes did well to take the remaining wickets for England. So as I said before, really good signs going forward for England in terms of their spinners and obviously with their other bowlers as well. Um, overall, I think this was a great win from England, but the key now for England is not to get complacent. They can't get complacent because they know this India side will bounce back. It's very rarely India have two bad games in a row. So uh, for England, it's just about keep doing what you've been doing, keeping it simple, playing good cricket, and hopefully, if you play good cricket in this second test match, hopefully it will um, result in a 2-0 series lead, and hopefully, by the end of the series, hopefully a spot in the World Test Championship final, and hopefully a series win in India for the first time since 2012 for England. So it's going to be a very interesting second test match of this series, but England do know that this test match is a very critical test match in terms of the series. If they go 2-0 up here, then heading into that third test match in Ahmedabad, which is the day-night test, England will be backing themselves to win that test. So this is a very critical test match for both sides. India can't afford to lose this match, but if England win this match, as I said before, they're on track to win, a, win the series, I should say, and wipe out any hope of a series win for India because the only best result India can get is a drawn series if England go 2-0 up in the series. So for England, it's just about keeping it simple, doing the basics right, and hopefully... For them, it will lead to a um, good test match win and a 2-0 series lead. Who do I think is going to win this second test match in Chennai? Well, I think both teams are a chance to win this test match. We know a different wicket has been prepared for this second test and is expected to take turn and spin very early in this test match compared to the first test pitch. So once again, the toss will be critical and whoever wins it will have a big advantage in these conditions. But at the end of the day, you have to do one or the other first, whether it's batting first or batting last. India will be under pressure heading into this test match, being 1-0 down, and England will be determined to get a 2-0 series lead. But both teams will try their best to win this test match. It won't be easy for both sides, but that's the beauty of test match cricket, testing your mental toughness, resilience, and character over the five days. Let's hope we get a good test match and may the best team win. Well, that's the end of the innings, the close of play for this episode of the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get the latest episodes of the podcast and like and share our Facebook page. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.